So I want to talk about something that's been on my mind these last six or so months that we haven't really covered on this channel, um, but people have been sort of in my DMs talking about it and, and stuff like that in the comments. Uh, let's talk about Graham Wright's sabbatical. So in December, uh, Graham Wright, the general manager uh, at, at Collingwood, uh, announced a sabbatical, well, not just him, that the whole club announced a six-month sabbatical to be returning to the club in September. Now, this was sort of, you know, talked about after Graham Wright has been in the football world for like 35 years straight, um, player, and then, you know, he oversaw Hawthorne's premiership success and stuff like that, and been at the Pisons 2021. We'll talk a little bit about what he's done uh, a little bit later. But, you know, it's really unheard of that someone this high up, the general manager, the GM, takes a six-month sabbatical. Now, if you sort of listen to the murmurings of, like, the media and stuff like that, apparently, and, and this is all just rumor-mongering, obviously, um, Graham Wright wanted to quit, wanted to just go and, and just do his European uh, vacation trip with his wife and stuff and, and not worry about the football at all, which is fair enough if, if that was if that was the case. But Collingwood said, no, look, we want you to stay, we need you to stay, but here's six months off. Here's six months leave for you to go do what you want and we'll have you as a part-time consultant. So if we do need you, we can call you up and um, we can chat about from there. Now, this really plays into Collingwood's, um, you know, family first mantra, which is incredible. We saw it earlier this year with, um, what was it? Was it Markov where he went to a wedding or something like that? Um, because it, it is family first and that's what Craig McRae and, and everyone else is sort of um, preaching at that club and, and I think that's amazing and it's inclusive and uh, you know we see it when uh, you know the family's in the room and, and bringing the dads along for like their father's day and the mother's day thing and, and all this sort of stuff and the mother's day roses and I think that's I think that's really good I think that's 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 the makings of a really good football club but I think the biggest thing for me anyway is how has this affected our 2024 season so let me list everything that the GM of football, Graham Wright, does at Collingwood. So in this role, he oversees the entire football department, uh, player recruitment, list management, uh, overall football operations, strategic planning, coaching staff appointments, ensuring the smooth function, the smooth functioning of the football department to achieve the club's competitive goals. So there's a long list of things to do. He does so much that his role had to be split up between a handful of people. Justin Lepich took a little bit up. Brendan Bolton took a little bit up. Uh, Craig Kelly has become a little bit more hands-on uh, in the CEO role. Um, Claire Pettifor, uh, she was sort of in line to, she, she was like second to to, um, to Graham Wright, if I remember correctly. Uh, she was sort of in line to take a bit of these responsibilities as well, but she went over to Melbourne. There's been a little bit of umming and ahhing about, you know, sort of why that happened um, as well, but that's, I guess, another another sort of story. Um, so his, his one role, or his, his one person's role, had to be split up between a number of people. That's how much Graham Wright has done for this club since coming on in 2021. So let's talk about 2021. So Graham Wright comes on uh, as GM in 2021 after he was there for Hawthorne for a long time. He oversees Buckley's departure. He oversees uh, getting Craig McRae in, uh, which was just a huge turning point for the club. Um, that 2021 season after that whole review, uh, just an absolute huge, huge, huge turning point for the Pies. 2022 brings in um, a few players, you know, Lipinski, Kruger, and these sort of guys, and, and the recruiting and stuff. 2022, obviously, Nick Dacos' uh, first year, he oversaw the, the picks and all that sort of training that we needed to do to get uh, Nick Dacos into the club during the draft period. 2023, as we know, premiership year, uh, Graham Wright has a lot of hands to do with that. All those trades, all those free agency, you know, Tom Mitchell, Dan McStay, um, all these sort of guys uh, comes into the club, you know, Billy Franton and stuff like that. And then, obviously, at the end of 2023, he takes that sabbatical. So, Graham Wright has been a major, major player in Collingwood's game and, and even just a lot behind the scenes. And when you see him on match day in, like, 2023, 2022, he's on the bench most of the time as well um, around there. So, do we miss his presence on the bench? Um, do we miss his, his presence where, you know, now that his role has shifted to a lot of different people, is there a power struggle or something like that? You know, like you hear you hear the media pundits um, talking about how uh, 
X is upset with Y because Y wanted the role and X didn't get the role and, and all this sort of stuff. And, and that's, again, that's just a lot of rumor mongering. We, we don't know. So I'm not going to sort of say, oh, X is mad at Y because of this, because we just, we just don't know any of that. But I do feel like Graham Wright's non-presence at this football club and maybe the way that he left, in my opinion, has left a bit of a sour taste in people's mouths, maybe. Um, but definitely, I feel like his, his non-presence there has really affected the club going forward. There's also been a number of changes with within our coaching panel. So we haven't really lost anyone. And, and there were a couple of, um, you know, Skipworth was sort of mentioned, Scott uh, Salwood, Justin Lepage. There were sort of other clubs wanting these players, but we kept the core of our coaches together. The only thing that we've changed is some responsibilities. And I think that's a trickle down from um, from from Graham Wright leaving. So like, like, let's look at this, right? So Hayden Skipworth in 2023, his role was assistant coach uh, responsible for the midfield group with Scott Selwood. 2024, promoted to senior assistant, but still the midfield coach, right? That doesn't really change much. Uh, Scott Selwood in 2023 was a development coach focused on player growth uh, and, and development, obviously. Uh, and he was the midfield coach with Skipworth. Now he's he's um, uh, promoted to assistant coach and he's responsible for the forward line. Jordan Roughhead was uh, worked a lot with the AFRW program as an assistant coach. He's come on and he's responsible for the back line now in 2024. Justin Lepage, senior assistant coach the last season, uh, he contributed to, to a lot of the lines in, in the coaching, but mainly uh, the forward line was instrumental in in you know what we did a, a, as a club last season to win that um, premiership. Now he's director of strategy and innovation, focusing on developing and implementing the football program strategic vision. So a little bit different uh, than coaching the forwards, obviously. Uh, a little bit more broad, a little bit more all-encompassing. Brendan Bolton was director of coaching last season, uh, and he oversaw the overall coaching framework and backline coaching. So he was a backline coach. Now he's Director of Coaching, Learning and Leadership, and again, encompassing a broader leadership and educational role across the football department, and again, taking those responsibilities from Graham Wright, him and Justin Lepich. Uh, Brendan McCartney comes on as a full-time uh, developmental coach for the younger players, so that's fine, and Josh Fraser is um, Head of uh, Development and VFL Senior Coach as well, along with uh, Neville Jetta. So there are tweaks here and there, here and there. Uh, to, to all these sort of coaches. And, you know, Craig McRae does come out and say that we want to promote from within, and, and I'm all for that. I'm all for sort of changing. But is that changing too much from 2023 to 2024? Because, you know, I know that the vision is all the same, and, and it's all that sort of one team, that one vision, and we sort of know how we want to play. But when you move from the back line, let's say, as a back line coach to the forward line as a coach, you're going to have sort of different ideas to what, the coach did last year. Same with the midfield, and same with this, same with that. So, I don't know. I, I think, I think there's, there's just been a, a little bit too much of a change in, in Collingwood's backroom staff in the last, you know, since the Premiership really. So since that December, January, March sort of sort of area, and I think it really cascaded down from that um, Graham Wright uh, sabbatical and. And Brendan Bolton isn't as hands-on as he was, and Justin Lepage isn't as hands-on as he was. But I like the I like the progress. I just think it's really hindered us, and you can kind of see that from um, the way we've been playing. It's very different from 2023. Uh, I know I say that you know we have to evolve, and that's fine. Everyone has to evolve, and teams have to evolve. But I feel like we've gone way too far one side, where it should have been only a little bit. We've gone way off, um, and I just think it, it's really just messed us up just from obviously from the outside sort of looking in and all obviously my opinion and that's not to say that I don't think any of these coaches are, are good in in these new roles it's just to say that different ideas from coming from different roles I don't know just you, I, like maybe maybe I'm sure you feel it too that there's just something different with the game plan with the coaching um, I just feel like we've been out coached these last three or four weeks and that's not like Collingwood. It's not like Craig McRae um, and his team. And I think that is because we're, we're sort of losing that Justin Lippich role. We're losing that Brendan Bolton role because they're doing a more wider role. Like, I think it's just, you know, sh I guess the whole question of this video is, should we have let Graham Wright quit and then found the next best person for Graham Wright? Or have we done the right move? And, and I'm, 
all for the family first. I understand that. I get that. But have we done the right move for the club by letting Graham Wright go and not getting someone in to fill his role straight away and then having Bolts and Lepo and, and whoever else is, is sort of doing more of a hands-on role? Like, Graham Wright comes back in September. That's if to say we make finals in September. So he'll be there for, like, the off-season sort of stuff. But when you think about it, the off-season stuff is, is going throughout the season anyway. Um, I, I'd love to sort of get Graham right on the phone and ask what's what you know what's going on and stuff and I, maybe the media outlets are, are sort of maybe they should be doing that maybe they, someone should be talking to to Graham right and seeing if he even wants to come back there's rumors that he might go to Tasmania because they're looking for that sort of GM up there as well so it's a very interesting time for for the backroom staff of of the pies and I'd love to get all of your thoughts on it leave your thoughts down in the comment section below I personally believe that there's been a little bit too much change and that's really set us on the back foot this year um be interesting to see what happens in the off season with these coaches do they sort of stay what happens when graham wright comes back does the leppich and bolton go wait hang on a second we love our roles graham wright we love him you got to do something else or, or so who knows who really knows and we're not going to find out for the next few months anyway but um yeah i guess we've been i feel like we've been suffering on field because of it um but again this is just the eye test. I can't really tell you if that's true or not. That's just my opinion. And um, yeah, I guess just just the eye test. But let me know your thoughts down below. And until then, like, comment, subscribe, tay family, tay friends, tay pets, and until next time, double shackers. I'll sweep you later.